Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca, and today we're going to be learning about different breathing patterns. Here is a quick overview of the breathing patterns that we'll cover, with a visualization and example respiration rate for each one. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. First, we'll start with the normal or regular breathing pattern, also known as eupnea. Here, you can see how a normal breathing pattern is usually visualized. It kind of looks like a nice and steady wave. This is because eupnea is unlabored and has a nice and steady rate, meaning it remains regular and consistent. As you breathe in, the line moves up, and as you breathe out, the line moves down. So again, eupnea is nice and regular inspiration and expiration, which occurs at rest, and a general baseline respiration is about 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Keeping eupnea here for reference, we'll move on to tachypnea. Tachypnea, or rapid breathing, looks very similar to normal breathing, but as you can see, the inspirations and expirations occur much faster. So with tachypnea, you get more breaths per minute. Tachypnea can be caused by so many different problems, including asthma, anxiety, pneumonia, and so much more. Bradypnea, or slowed breathing, is simply the opposite of tachypnea. You can see that the inspirations and expirations are more spread out. They occur over a longer period of time. So with bradypnea, you see fewer breaths per minute. Bradypnea can be caused by many different things as well, including opioid administration, cardiovascular problems, and much more. Apnea is the absence of breathing. You can see here that during apnea, there are no inspirations or expirations. Apnea can be temporary, like during sleep apnea, or permanent following a head injury or stroke. Hyperpnea is breathing in more air than normal. You can think of this as taking deeper breaths. This is represented by a taller wave. Do note that hyperpnea doesn't necessarily mean the respiration rate is increasing. Again, it's deeper breaths rather than faster breaths. However, in some cases, you can have both hyperpnea and tachypnea at the same time. Hyperpnea may be caused by exercise, anemia, high altitudes, and more. Hypopnea is simply the opposite of hyperpnea. It is breathing in less air than normal, which is represented by smaller waves. You can think of hypopnea as taking shallow breaths. There are many causes of hypopnea, some of which include neuromuscular disease, sedatives, obesity, and more. Chain Stokes breathing is a gradual change between hypopnea and hyperpnea, followed by a period of apnea, and this pattern repeats. In other words, the Chain Stokes pattern is the change between a gradual increase and gradual decrease in the deepness of each breath followed by a period of no breathing. Chain Stokes breathing may occur in various brain injuries, including increased intracranial pressure, stroke, and more. Chain Stokes breathing may also occur in heart failure and those near end of life. Bio's breathing is characterized by a period of hyperpnea, followed by a period of apnea, and this pattern repeats. Bio's breathing differs from Chain Stokes breathing because there is no gradual increase or decrease in the pattern. Bio's breathing may occur in stroke, CNS trauma, meningitis, and more. Cusmol's breathing is a type of hyperventilation, and it is the combination of tachypnea and hyperpnea. This means a rapid respiration rate with deep breaths. Cusmol's breathing can occur in diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, and metabolic acidosis. The rapid, deep respirations help to expel more ketones and carbon dioxide, decreasing the acidity of the blood. And that's about it for these breathing patterns. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.